Welcome, everybody, to Catfish Weekly, presented by Whisker Wear Apparel, along with the Dr. Tim Lang. I'm Lyle Stokes, and Doc, we have got a bunch of stuff to go over tonight. Yes, we do. Man, I, we had some wonderful weather here the last few days. Everybody's getting rain. We're not getting much rain, but the temperatures has been very nice. Been a little windy. Wasn't too bad today, though. It was just pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, in Ohio here, it's uh, it, it, a little bit sunny. Some clouds moved in, and we're supposed to have rain for the next three days. Typical nice. Ohio. Yeah, <laughs> I understand. That's like they say in Missouri, if you don't like the weather, hang around. It's going to change in about one hour. Yeah, that's how. That's Ohio, that's for sure. But I, I like Ohio. I'm used to it. So. Well, yeah, that's the way with me. Fishing for Freedom, June 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. I want to make sure that everybody... If yep. interested in getting to that tournament, please sign up. We need 100 boaters to take all of our warriors out. These are true American heroes. If you ever want to do anything for the people that make sure you are safe every day, please sign up for this tournament. It's very much the most fun tournament you will ever fish. Doc, how, many, how long is it till Fishing for Freedom? Fishing for Freedom. 66 days, 3 hours, 57 minutes, and 54 seconds. Awesome. Awesome. I knew that you would know. Doc, I have got the chance to fish with my good buddy John Nordyke over the weekend. We went and fished the first Cabela's tournament this year at Lake of the Ozarks, and I know that we're planning on doing results and stuff a little bit later on. But John and I had a really good time. He called me Thursday, and I had not planned to go because our boat wasn't ready. And I went up Friday and we looked around and didn't put a fish in the boat. And the bait was just ignorant, easy to get. Just un oh. unbelievable. Nets full of shad at a time. And I, Brian will be in here with us in a minute and he'll go over some of that stuff too. The shad is just unbelievable up there right now and crappie everywhere. Of course, you can't use those for bait. But uh, we looked around a little bit Friday, and I spent the night with him and, and Lois at their new house, and we went out Saturday morning and got our bait and instantly started catching fish, and we caught fish all day long. Yeah, that's yeah. Good exactly. yeah, I mean, we missed a couple of fish, and we didn't get our overs, but my gosh, we had a great time. It was just so much fun fishing with John. He's such a good guy to fish in tournaments with or, or, or any time. But we really had a blast and um, run a great tournament up there. Them guys they put on a good show. Uh, first place at Lake of the Ozarks was 121.46 pounds. Paid them guys $2,800 and four sixty dollars for big fish. That was Justin Cook and Gary Ryan. My good friends Andrew Little and Jeff Sanger, 97.08 pounds for second place and third place was Justin Neese and Mike Carpenter with 59.58 pounds. So people that don't think you can catch fish at Lake of the Ozarks, you got another think of coming. Yep. yep. Looking, Looking forward. forward. Yep. It's going to be a blast. Can't wait. We'll get into some more of that stuff later mm -hmm. on after we get done with our guests tonight. But at this present time, we couldn't get old squeaky boomer Wilson in here tonight, so we got his buddy Brian Saunders. How you doing, Brian? Doing good. How are you? Man, we're awesome. I, I understand you had quite the weekend. Oh, uh, we had a busy weekend, that's for sure. Fun filled, never a dull moment. That's awesome. That's awesome. We um we don't have Cindy in you guys, so if you want to know what's going on, she's babysitting my granddaughter, and uh it's a little gonna be a little tight. For Doc and I to keep up with all the chat, but we're going to do the best we can. So, yeah, I heard him say I got an echo. Sorry. How is old Boomer doing? Uh, he pretty much sounds like a frog. There was a few times over the weekend when you'd talk to him and he'd go to answer you, you'd just kind of get a squeak and he'd have to take a drink or <laughs> cough a little bit and then he could kind of mutter something out. <laughs> I've never seen Boomer like that. I'm quite yeah. sure that's very interesting. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> Willie from Mud Bums came down and fished with us, hung out with us all weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And, uh, yeah, me and Willie, we didn't let him get by with it, that's for sure. Attaboy. I'm glad to hear that. I really am. <laughs> Thanks, Okie Catfishing. Appreciate it. 
Yes, sir. We do appreciate it very much. Now, Brian, you guys went to the lake and done some pre-fishing and looking around up there. And before you went to fish your tournament uh, on the Missouri River, did you have any problem finding bait on the Lake of the Ozarks? As soon as you put the water in, you start marking balls of shad big as a school bus. Isn't that uh, something? It's it's stupid right now. It is, you know, and and I've been up there when you couldn't, when it was a little tough to find bait, but we've always been able to get bait there. And I, I think right now you could go to back any of them coves and get all the bait that you want. You could, yeah. I mean, we drifted, you know, we anchored up on some shallow water. We did a little bit of everything, just, you know, just fishing is all we was doing, just hanging out in the boat. And you'd be drifting along, you know, and we got out into some 25 foot of water and you'd run over. I mean, the screen on the fish finder, would it wouldn't even read bottom, you know, just for the balls of shad. It's just, it's everywhere. It's deep, it's shallow. You know, you could about go down and close your eyes and throw a net and catch them. I think you're right. That's, that's pretty much it. And, uh, you know, for guys that are coming to fish the lake, uh, bait is like that maybe not quite as as easy as it is right now but most of the time you don't have trouble getting getting bait and there's some giant fish in that lake they you have to the thing that i tell people and i don't guess they really get it is you must wade through the small ones and the the slot limit fish before you can get the big ones and when you get into the big ones there's good fish in there i mean uh you just you just got to find them and catch them that's all yep Yep, I think you're right. We um, we did. Now, how big were the shad? Anywhere from two or three inches to big shad. Yeah. It depends okay. on where you was at. Uh, some of them are still pretty small, but there is some good shad in there. Uh, and Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, but we we've seen some shad over the weekend that was anywhere from eight to thirteen inches. Oh yeah, easily. Yeah. We probably had a six to eight inch average on what we took to our tournament, you know, for Sunday. Right. Now, some of the guys that was down at, at the Cabela's tournament had some bigger shad than what John and I did. But um, the first three throws, the nets was full. John actually was using a smaller net because he knew they was going to be like that. And uh, we'd let half to two thirds of them out of the net before we even tried to bring it in the boat. Uh, yeah. that, that's that was like you can't lift it up. That's exactly right. And and the day of the tournament, we went down, and he made the first throw, and we let a, probably two-thirds or three-fourths of them out, put the rest of them in the live well because it was still dark. We wasn't sure what we had. And when we got to our first spot, we was taking the little dip net that you used to get bait with and kicking them back out in the water. There was so many yeah. in the live well. So yeah. Yeah, bait bait's not hard to get, and uh, there's some great fish in there. There really is. So you guys had a great day on the Missouri River. We did. We did. We uh, fished the Central, or not the Central, the Twisted Cats, Alex, Na Alex Nagy's tournament in Columbia. It was at, at, done at Catfish Katie's. I think there was uh, 35 boats, 35 or 36. Uh, we ended up, got second place. We had 80.35 pounds. First place had 80.53, so... <laughs> that's a close way in man. yeah it was um big fish of the tournament was and that was Dwayne lynn scott that won uh and big fish of the tournament i think dave swearingen had it and i he can correct me if i'm wrong because i'm sure he's on there uh i think it was right at 55 pounds that sounds right so that's a great, great fish anywhere you go. I love to catch those fish like that. They're a ton of fun. And uh, how was the current on the old Missouri? Uh, the river was really low. I mean, it's it's been low for a while, which all this rain we got today, it's they're projecting a three-foot rise, but, uh, I mean, it was normal. Yep. So Good. All the dikes were exposed, you know, lots of shallow water if you wanted to fish shallow water. That's and cool. Still, still plenty of deep water too. So well, uh, Missouri's got that deep water, and they got swift current. Was the current out of hand, or was it oh. uh, tolerable? Oh yeah, it was tolerable. Yeah, but you live right there, so what's tolerable to a lot of people might not be the same for you. You fish it all the time. Yeah, it wasn't no more than five or six miles an hour in the fast spots. 
<laughs> That's what we like, ain't it, Doc? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I seen Brian or uh, uh, Dave did post 55.7. That's a great fish, Dave. Congratulations on that. Yeah. Good job, Dave. Mike Branham says six mile an hour. That's that you know, that's pretty typical for the Missouri River. Yeah. You know, most, most places when they're flooded, they have four, five, six mile an hour current. That's just common for Missouri River where we fish. Yep. It's, uh, it really <coughs> well, congratulations. You guys had a great day. Um, I know fishing with Willie has got to be a blast. And, of course, Boomer's always a good time. And I'm sure it was a lot more fun. Benzie was having trouble talking. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> You just, just start to talk, and you couldn't understand. You just start laughing. Oh, I'll bet. I'll bet. I, I would have wore him out if I'd have been in that boat with you guys. I promise you. Yeah. But the lake, the lake was pretty good. The shad, you know, like I said, it was simple, dumb, easy. Uh, there was a lot of boats. That we, we got a late start. I don't think we got on the water till like 1230. Uh, the parking lot was absolutely crammed full. And we was down on the big end of the lake. You know, there was a lot of bass boats, crappie boats. The crappie have been on fire for about two months down there. Yep. So, I mean. What's, what's the big end of the lake? What uh, down, the lake? Well, we actually put in at Kaufman, at the Kaufman Beach Ramp, which where the gravoy arm meets the main channel, I think is the six mile marker. So. Okay. We yep. were down, you know, be six miles up. <clears throat> I'm still trying to learn this lake. I got one well, month. I got two months to learn it. It's uh, Kaufman Beach is not terribly far from where Public Beach Number Two, where we're going to be launching out of the dock. Okay. Uh, yeah, PB Two is up. What? Twenty-one, twenty-two mile marker. Right. Yeah. That's and it, what what arm is it in? The uh, I don't remember because it's kind of just an arm that goes up in there and splits yeah. up. A whole bunch just of on the main main section. Yeah, yeah can, part of the lake. Boomer will tell us here in a minute. Is he on there? I haven't seen him yet, but as much as we've been ragging on him, I'm surprised. Yeah, he must not be on there then. Yeah, or he'd be <laughs> he'd be firing back, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah. Brian, there's been, there's look, been several guys been catching some nice, you know, some nice blues down there all all winter and even you know recently, you know yep. there's. They're catching them. Now, where we was at was on the other end of the lake, and uh, we had 47, 48 uh, degree water. And, of course, that's going to raise. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to get warmer water, and they've got to start putting water in that lake at some point. Yeah. Well, so, I think Kansas City had some rain this afternoon, too, and south of them, so that should help. That's good. Yeah. That's that's real good because we need, we need to get the water level up a little bit, although um, – on the big end of the lake where we're going to be holding that tournament, the coves are pretty deep. Uh, yeah. where, where John and I fish, they're not. Those poor people down there that spent all that money on them fig old fancy houses, yeah. up in them coves, uh, there's no water even around their dock. A lot of them docks are sitting on the mud. That, that's exactly mm. right. You know, they're in trouble if for, until we get some water in there. And, and I know what's coming, and they know what's coming. It happens. They do this every year. But, uh, yeah. yeah, it's uh, pretty rough. Richard Ward says it's Ward says it's raining in St. Joseph. That's good news for us. Yeah. So Brian, if you was coming to the lake to fish, I hope that you are. I am. I, I thought you probably was. Um, where would you start out in two months? I'd say it'll be shallow water. Shallow water. And you'd be using shad for bait, most likely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Unless uh, Danny brings some stink bait or something. <laughs> yeah, you think we ought to check his boat so he don't have none of that in there before you start? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. You know. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be, there's going to be a lot of fish caught. You know, everybody's going to get tired of culling fish, I'm sure, because it's just going to be that. That's just that time of the year. I mean, it, it's just going to be good fishing. Yep. You just have to weed through them, like you said, you know, to get your, your overs. Yep. Now, for guys like Doc, who likes them flatheads, that time of the year, they should be on fire there. Yep. 
Yep. I was actually, I didn't edit a 52 pound flathead for Boomer there last fall. There's some great flatheads in that, in that lake. And, yep. and people don't realize there's a lot of them in that lake. Yeah, there is. There's a lot of flatheads. I mean, What's yeah, that? You got to target them. You got to get where right. they're at. That's right. And there's a lot yeah. of structure in the lake. There right? is. There is. Yep. And they'll eat shad, live, cut, dead, whatever. Dave wants to know if uh, you are still, you and Danny are still sharing a house with him and Greg. Mm, I think so, Dave. That'd be awesome. That'd be a fun place to be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Nick Goodell wants to know, is it one fish over 34 per person? It's, it's two. It's two. The, the rules that we have for the tournament, and we set them up like this because all of the other tournaments that was going to be at the lake agreed they wanted to do two over 34 per boat, which would be one per person, and everybody was going to do that, and then everybody didn't stick with it. But I'm not going to change because what we're trying to do is show the DNR and the Missouri Department of Conservation we are serious about these slot limits and, and saving these big fish. So it's two over 34, three unders. Your slot limit is between 26 and 34. And the way the law is written, that's not on the line. 26, it has to be under 26 and over 34. And the way we measure them is with belly down, nose against the bump board. Pinch tail. Pinch tail. Gotcha. Uh, Bradley Young said to tell Brian, Brian, my daughter loved seeing their big fish yesterday. She told me we need to catch one that size. I hope <laughs> she does. <laughs> She's an awful cute little girl. I Man. love seeing I love seeing you taking her out, Brad. Absolutely. That was a great picture of them I seen this morning. I, I really enjoy that. And Brad's really good about taking her out fishing. And what a way. Them, them's the kids we need started in this sport. Yep. My uh, my 16-year-old daughter, she likes to go, but she's a fair-weather fisherwoman. And she's well, going to school and holding down a job and a boyfriend and everything. So dad kind of got put to the back burner a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> I understand. All right. So now back, let's go back to the shallow water fishing. Here in Ohio, when somebody tells, you know, when I tell somebody I'm fishing shallow, I'm in one to two foot of water. What What is shallow on Lake of the Ozarks? That's you're there, okay. One, one, you know, a foot or more. So, in, so, in some areas that I fish, I can see their back sticking out of the water. I've heard tale of that at the lake, but I haven't witnessed it yet. Okay, if you get into them, doc, you're gonna do really good. Yeah, yep, <laughs> Dennis. It yeah. is two over 34, doesn't matter if it's blues or flatheads, two over 34 per boat. Keep the questions coming, guys. Yep. I mean, we we got a guy that fishes here all the time, so if you want questions answered, fire away. We're here to help out. That's correct. We want to get all the questions answered that we can. I'll go over some other stuff a little bit later in the show, but uh, like I say, if like Doc said, if you if you want answers for Lake of the Ozarks, now is the time. You know, Doc, uh, a lot of guys and. I don't, not everybody fishes lakes and rivers, you know, so there's river guys, there's lake guys, but I think this tournament's big enough. You're going to have guys that are going to be out of their comfort zone, you know, fishing a big old wide open lake. Uh, just, uh, I've seen a lot of guys bring, uh, like closet rods and they'll just sink them down in the mud and anchor their, tie their boat off to it. You know that's that's a that's a way to fish shallow. Uh, there's a lot of guys that do that. It it eliminates having you know to double anchor with ropes yeah. out the front and the back. Right. Uh, I remember the first time I saw the guys with these big long poles strapped on their side of their boat. I because mm -hmm. I was just a a river guy. You know, my first time at the lake was a eye opening experience, but. <laughs> That, that does work pretty well. And there's several companies that make actual, you know, shallow water anchors that, that you can 
screw together and you know all that kind of good stuff so i have a set of those they work very well yeah yeah they sure do Somebody Don't wants to know, would live frog do any good? Live frogs? Yeah. I guess. I mean, I've been known to use grass frogs myself. Maybe not okay. at the lake, but. Here's a good question for you, Brian. My buddy John wants to know if whether or not, if they're running water at the dam at Truman, will that affect the other end of the lake at all? Yes. I mean, let me back up. It depends on how long they've been running water. It takes a while for that current to get, you know, down to the big end. But oh yeah, it that that makes some stupid fishing when they're running yeah. water. Yeah, it does. Now, one thing that uh, I'm curious about is, of course, we don't know. It's kind of like the weather. We can't predict whether it'll be running water or not. Um, I wonder sometimes if they run water into the lake, if they let some out at the big end, just um, so there's flow, or do they just try to fill it up, then shut Truman down, and then run some out of the lake? A lot of times they will. They'll run them. You know, they'll run the gates open on both dams. I've, you know, remember last uh, what was it? Last May mm -hmm. when uh, Truman got so full. And they just dumped Truman. And so, I mean, they were running all the, all the gates open at Bagnell, too, at the same time. Yep. And and there was current in, in the lake. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was good. It was really good fishing down there. It was one anchor out the front, just like he was in the river. You know, a couple mile an hour, three, two and a half mile an hour current. That's outstanding for the lake. Yeah. yeah. Dave wants to know, if you're going to pre-fish, would you fish the Osage arm or the Grabois arm? Depends on water conditions, but I probably, I don't know. I don't think I'd probably go to the gravel arm. That's, the, that's the upper arm, right? Yeah. So lower. Yeah. The, that's the, down at the six mile marker where the gravel dumps in. Yep. Oh, okay. And at times it's outstanding. Yep. The, like, uh, probably tomorrow it would be outstanding with the rain they got down there today. Yep. Now, if they're running water, from from Truman, I would want to be on the Osage arm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that that's just my opinion. Uh, I don't ever catch anything, but uh, yeah. That, that now, where does Truman dump into? It dumps into the it, it dumps into the little end of of Lake Ozark. At Warsaw. At Warsaw, yeah. Okay, so that's the skinny stretch. Yes, going up. Okay. Yep. Like I said, I'm trying to learn this thing. Well, you, you'll have it figured out. Brian Mike Branham wants to know, do you think drifting is going to work with all the boat traffic? Um, Always does. Yeah. Yeah, those, those fish are so used to a thousand boats running over them every single day that, you know, it's the boat traffic is not going to affect the fish. It'll affect you way worse than it'll affect the fish. That, that's exactly right. And, and you know, we've talked to the, the, the to motel owners, resort owners, to fishermen. We're two weeks before the big amount of boat traffic starts. After the last weekend in May, that's when it really picks up. That lake is like any other lake. There's big boat traffic in it year-round, unless it freezes up. Yep. It's no different than fishing any other lake, and there won't be any more traffic there until after the last weekend in May. At that point, schools are out and vacations are on, and then I wouldn't be on the top end of the lake unless I just had to be. Right. Okay. Yep. That, and that was one of the questions uh, Jeremy King had. Yep. Uh, it, it's a big lake. It really is. There's there's 1,100 miles. Oh, thank you, Dave. I was just getting ready to talk about it. 1,100 miles of shoreline. It's around 100 miles dam to dam, isn't it, Brian? Yeah, yeah it's 96 or something like it, that. Yeah. It's a huge lake. You can get away from them boats. I'm telling you, it's 
not that big a deal. And, and I don't care if you go to Lake Norfolk or you go to any other big lake, you're going to have boat traffic. That's part of being on a lake. You're going to have boat traffic in the summertime on the Missouri River because people want to be out. So yep. it's no different than anywhere else. That's right. Absolutely. Drifting always works down there, though, it seems like. It does. It does. You can drift and drag baits and catch fish. I'm not going to say it will, but it's nearly like that, isn't it, Brian? Yeah. Yep. Hey, we're, we're at 25 after. We have not spun the wheel yet. We need to spin the wheel. Come on, Spanky. Get on it. I'm, I am. I'm all loaded up and ready to go if you will pick us out a number, my friend. Between what? One and five? Three. One. Two. Three. 329 people in tonight, and Tim... Owensby, the cat buster, gets a spin on the old rig wrap prize wheel. My buddy, man, did they cook me up some really, really good crawfish. It was awesome. Here we go. Miss Cindy for doing this. She needs to get back here. And Tim, you win catfish clothing prize. If you will contact Matthew Miles at Catfish Clothing, tell him that you want a prize on the Rig Wrap prize wheel. Watching Catfish Weekly, he will fix you up. Thank you so much for watching and playing our games. We appreciate it so much. I got to tell you, Doc, before we go any further about the lake, we, we had tremendous amounts of people commenting on the last few shows we've had. We've had over a thousand views after they've been loaded up every week. And we're really proud of that. Thank you guys for all the likes yeah. and comments for signing up to the rig wrap prize wheel stuff for joining catfish weekly on our Facebook page. We do appreciate it. And if you get a chance, please like, and subscribe, share our, our, our videos off of, off of uh, YouTube means the world to us. The more times we can get our name out there, the faster it can grow. And that's why we have such great sponsors to help us out. Thank you, Lena. Yep. Yep. Dave, Dave wants want to know, know how, how are you? How are you doing blue 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 on the Ozark? It sounded like you was in a barrel to me, Doc. I don't, I don't, know. Know. I don't know what happened. It happens every now and then. I get that echo of it. Okay, let me repeat it. Uh, Dave wants to know, how is using bluegill on the Ozarks? Um, I've had success with it. Usually the water needs to be pretty warm. Uh, if you're targeting, you know, if you're targeting your flatheads, I'd say by all means try them. Or live shad. You know, bluegills will just stay a lot better than live shad on your hook. But, uh, yeah, they work. They work really well on Truman. Yes, they do. My son really? caught his personal best blue cat on Truman Lake on a bluegill head. And as far as he's concerned, that's the only bait you can use catching with, which <laughs> we know that's not true. But when you catch a big fish on something, it puts a lot of confidence behind you. And confidence, it, it means a lot. That's exactly right. Yeah. River Rat Outdoors, thank you so thank much. Thank you. Yep. You beat me to it, Lyle. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's all right. <laughs> but, yeah, bluegills will work. Um, I've not ever tried using them in, in the colder water, but in the summertime, when the water starts warming up, and I well, I call warm weather 60 and above, they're a good bait. Yep. Uh, Tony wants to know, would you fish coves or the main lake? More than likely coves. I agree. I agree. Those coves are really deep, and the sides come up to where you have shallow water, and you have deep water, and you got everything in between. And at some point, them fish are going to be on a spot. All you got to do is find where they're at and catch them. Yeah. And going back into the backs of the cove, <laughs> they slope up really gradual. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'll have you'll have a long ways of eight to ten foot. Then you'll have a long ways, you know of six to eight, you know, it just, they're really gradual. It, it makes it, 
makes it pretty good. It does, and that's why I think, Brian, in my opinion, for what it's worth, which is really worth nothing to nobody but me, I think <laughs> that's why shad is so easy to get in those coves. Yeah. Because they can stage up at 12 or 15 foot, or they can move up to 10 foot, or they can be right in the grass at the edge of them coves. And when you see them flipping, just throw your net and figure out how many you want to throw back out. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. Bass. You're going to have to explain that. <laughs> Bass. <laughs> Thanks, Northwood Dangley. In fact, here's a service announcement. Tonight's show is being brought to you by NorthwoodsAngling.com. Nice some, some friends may ask, how does a doctor keep from getting parched <laughs> while he's doing catfish, catfish Weekly? Well, here you go. Pure leaf tea. It keeps the big guy going. <laughs> that doc service announcement. <laughs> oh, man. Luke is going to love that. Oh, You'll have some comments rolling now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was great, Doc. That was really great. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Brian, is there anything else you could think of that we can share with these folks to kind of get them prepared for coming down? Uh, wait till snagging season's over to come and do your searching around and graphing and stuff because it has been packed. Well, I will say this about the, the guy snagging. I hope they're getting what they want because if you wait till daylight to go into a boat ramp on the weekend, the snaggers will take every parking spot in that boat ramp, and you got to be searching for a place because they're really in there. There's a tournament for snaggers every weekend, and I know them guys love to do it. And they are showing that they do because they are stacked up in every parking lot I've seen. Yes, they are. And now, how late, how long does that season go? End of the month, isn't it? April, March 31st to April 15th, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, that sounds March right. 15, March 15th, that didn't make sense. March 15th to, I think it's April 15th. I don't know. I yeah. don't snag. Yeah, I don't either. It's about a month. Yeah. I tell you, I see them guys going down through. Now, some of them guys use use ways that they that they um, uh, troll through there and snag those fish. But the guys that I'm seeing are sitting out there, and they got a pound of weight and a big old treble hook on there, and they're jerking that thing. And it's way back behind the boat, and they do all day long jerking that. Yep. I'll tell you right now, this old man ain't no more going to do that than he is going to go ice fishing. <laughs> <laughs> It ain't posted March 15th through April 30th. Okay. Yeah. I was backwards. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, but yeah, they'll, it'll slow down in a little bit. They, every boat we seen Friday had one or two in as many as four tied up beside them. Yeah. So they're getting them. I've heard, I don't know much about it or their patterns or anything like that, but I've heard that the, that they've moved up into the river you know, really early this year. It's usually not as good as what it is right now, so right. they're just tearing them up. Here's a good question. Is there any regulations on the size of the cast net you can use in Missouri? Yes. I think it's eight foot. I believe that's correct. And three-eighths mesh. Yep. Yep. I believe that's right. Thank you, Northwoods Angling. We appreciate it so much. But yeah, I think you're right. Eight foot, and I believe it's half inch mesh. Uh, I think it's three eighths. Or three eighths, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, which that's one of the reasons when you get on them, you have so many of them because the yeah. little ones can't get out. You get them in the net with them. Yeah. Uh, if they would open that up a little bit, some of the others could, the little guys could escape. Um, yeah. You know, personally, I like a five eighths mesh, but. Uh, it is what it is. You know, we right. don't make the laws and, and the rules. So uh, uh, we'll just keep throwing them back. I mean, they'll, they're going to grow just like everything else. They're going to grow. And Brian, I, before before we get done here, I, I talked to a bunch of people this weekend at the tournament down there, and they're uh, irritated because they have to throw these slot limit fish back. 
Now, my opinion for this, and I want to know what you think. My opinion for this is if we will give this rules five or six years to get these slot limit fish out of the slot and into the over range, and then the Preserve Department of Conservation will do their job and stop people from keeping all the slot limit fish they catch because a lot of people don't even know they're is a slot limit right right we're never going to have 500 100 pound fish in lake of the ozarks because the growth rate here is so slow but we're going to have great fishing in five or ten years that we haven't had on lake the ozarks and truman for forever you know so since back in the 1800s when they was catching 200 pound blue cat out of the osage river before the dams was built there's one in the smithsonian institute that was sent there because it was so big but those days are gone from over harvest and and we have to stop that in in the to let these slot fish get to the over range so they can breed and pass on those genes yep oh i agree wholeheartedly uh like you said you know i don't know if it'll how long it'll take for it to be another wheeler or wilson you know lake but but it's it's definitely got to make it better for guys that want to go catch big fish yep it does, and, and we have big fish there now, but there could be so many more, yeah. but the Department of Conservation has got to step up and do their job, and when they catch these guys, not slap them on a the hand, they, they got to let them know that they can't be doing that for these slot limit fish. So that gives them the chance to go on. Yep, you're right. I agree wholeheartedly. Okay, hey, good. Hey, Brian, give me a number from one to five. We're going to uh, give away a prize package in the chat room. How about four? Four it is. All right. Let's see. There's one, two, three, and four. And the winner is Tommy Ernest. Tommy Ernest. Tommy Ernest is out of Florida. Really? Okay. Well, Tom, you just won a prize package from Offshore Tackle. So get with Doc after the show. Put your uh, name and address on our Catfish Weekly page, and I'll get your prize package out to you. And thanks for joining us in chat tonight. Tom Ernest. I have uh, him in our sign-up just I think about every week. And uh, while we're on his deal, I will will tell everyone that Tommy Ernest sent me a message. And this is the second time we've talked about this. They have a catfish tournament coming up in honor of Noah. This is in at the Bristol Boat Ramp. Registration is at 9 a.m. till 10 p.m. This is on uh Let's see, March 30th and 31st, this is the benefit of family that lost a young man. If you're in Florida, if you're in their area, where I'm not sure exactly where the boat ramp is, uh, Bristol Boat Ramp, please, please help these folks out. Uh, you can contact Tommy at 850-447-1875 or check them out on Facebook. It's called Catfishing. Um, community catfish tournament in honor of Noah, and they are set up for PayPal if you'd like to make donations to this family. Now, back to Brian. I just saw a, a question. Uh, let's see, where was it at? They're rolling right along. Yeah, is, is Brian a mono or a braid kind of guy? <laughs> And I'm I don't think we're guy. talking about hair either. <laughs> I'm a mono guy. All right. All right. A man after my own heart. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, Boomer was uh, kind of brings up a funny one on Boomer from the weekend. We were out down on the lake and we were drifting, dragging bait, and of course, hit some submerged timber or a boat dock or. God only knows what in Lake of the Ozarks. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> but he, uh, 
he had braid on his rods and when he came to the tournament the next day he had mono on because that stuff cut down so deep it was a <coughs> he threw that rod in the bottom of the boat and got another one out and he had some choice squeaky words <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, he's never going to get over us. No. Seen another one here. I was trying to catch up with it. I got one. Ben Weber wants to know, do you think bait size is an issue at the Ozarks? Mm, I, I don't, don't. I'm not sure about what he means by that. Probably how big you're cutting your, your, your uh, cut bait if you're cutting it. I don't know. We run whole bait, you know, live bait. We run heads and donuts. Uh, we just mix it up. Okay. Is that the Ben from uh, St. Louis? Yes. Hi, Ben. How many pound tests are you running? Uh, I use 40. 40 pound uh, Berkeley big game. And I just... At the catfish conference, bought a roll of the slime line. I'm going to give it a shot here one of these days whenever I change my line out. Jerry Ishcomer, I promise you that the flatheads are not spawning in Missouri. Now, we're, I don't, not sure where you're at, but uh, they're not spawning in Missouri yet. We, we don't have warm enough water for them yet. No. Tony DeBuff wants to know what a donut is. <laughs> we like them, Tony. <laughs> Keep them coming. Yeah, we like them hot. <laughs> My posted Sonny Parker posted large cut bait in the shallows. Well, I'm not afraid to use big bait, and I don't think Brian is either. No, not at all. I don't even, I mean, a lot of guys on the Missouri River talk about bait size in the wintertime. Everybody, you know, I hear a lot of people say they use little bait in the summer or in the wintertime in cold water. I don't know. I, I don't use know. them as big as my hand a lot of times. That's, I, I agree. You yeah. know, I say, well, I downsize my hooks and downsize my baits. I don't. This is the way I look know. at it. If yeah. somebody sticks a steak in front of me and a hot dog, what am I going to eat? I'm not going to be touching that hot dog. Right. And I never downsize hook size. Nope, me either. Dennis, um, I, guess, I guess it just kind of goes back to personal preference. I, that's right. You know, you got six rods out of one boat, put a little bit of everything out, see if it makes a difference. Dennis <laughs> is talking about the labeling requirements if you use more than three rods. Well, in, in our tournaments, you're not allowed more than three rods per person. Now, on the Mississippi River, you are allowed two rods per person unless you have your name, phone number, address on it, or your conservation number. Yep. Um, any time now, you can use three or more, three rods per person anywhere else, and you can use up to what is it, thirty-three hooks. Yep. If you have your name, address, phone number, or your conservation number on your other rods if you're not fishing a tournament because in tournaments nobody allows over three rods per person that i'm aware of uh, there might be some tournaments that do but i'm not aware of them yeah and three eighths is the maximum size jerry on on your um throw net throw net best donuts in the world are in owensboro kentucky <laughs> that tony said no, uh, I it, I just lost it now. I I guess Tony was making a funny because he's a hell of a fisherman. I I don't. He knows what a donut is. I call a donut between the head section and the tail section. It's got yeah. the jelly fill in. It. That's right. That's exactly yeah. right. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be a wise butt to him, but I figured he was probably joking. Yeah, he pretty yeah. probably knows. You cut them in midsections up a lot of times. We'll use them the whole thing, and sometimes you'll cut them in half. And when this when the jelly falls out, it looks like a donut looking down through it. That's yeah, it's yep. what it is. But yeah, it was uh, that's kind of funny. But if you can keep that stuff in there, they'll stay interested a lot longer. Sometimes, yep, they will. We both. Oh, and and it is actually. 
easy to keep in. If you remember right at the catfish conference, there was a lady there that's got that netting stuff. And that is right. that is stuff worked great for keeping shad guts in it. They, the fish can bite right through that stuff. It doesn't affect anything. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I, I, you know, she was a very nice lady and had a really great product. And, and, uh, that would definitely keep them in there, Brian, you know, mm -hmm. oh, just, yeah. it, whatever you got to do to get them to go. I mean, that's, you, you know, as long as it's legal, you should be able to do it. Yep. Jerry wants that. to know if you use planer boards. Oh uh, yeah, actually we did over the weekend. Yep. Uh, all time. Yeah. We, we pulled four boards most of the afternoon when we were, when we were you know, dragging bait. So, Here's one for you, Brian. Jerry says he throws a seven-foot net with one-inch mesh in Texas. Now, they ain't going after no little bait. I love it. Wow. Put me in, Coach. Heck yeah, man. A one-inch mesh, you're going to get – you're not going to have anything but big bait. Right. You're going to get what you want. That's exactly – That's a hundred for you. <laughs> yep. Oh, Dave said, tell them about your YouTube videos. We have videos on the Catfish Weekly National Championship you, uh, uh, Facebook page and on our YouTube page where we interviewed the manager of Robin's Resort, a great place to fish, the lady that uh, is over top of the inn at the Grand Glaze, which is a beautiful motel, has a restaurant bar, everything right there in it. Uh Great rates for our tournament. If you guys are coming down for that, uh, be sure to check those videos out. You'll you'll really enjoy them. Those are nice places. There's another motel, and the, the name of it eludes me, but they was pretty much booked not very long ago, so I'm assuming they probably are full. Uh, so check those videos out. You'll, you'll really enjoy them. There's some great people, and they got some really, really nice places to stay. Yep. yep. Bradley Young wants to know what drift when drifting, what type of hooks do you prefer to use? I I use one hook and it's the eight dot double action hook by Team Catfish. My go to hook. That's the only one I use. Non stop, twenty four seven. That's a great hook. Like I said, we uh we used I used the uh hookers terminal tackle reapers over the weekend on eight aught. Missed one fish the whole day. Uh, very, very pleased with them. Extremely sharp. Done a bang-up job. But I'm a little different, Brian. If I'm bumping on the river, I like those uh, big river gamagatsus, and I try to break their face off every time I get a bite. Yeah, well, I'm not a bumper yet. I just got my trolling motor mounted on my boat. I'll get batteries for it Thursday, and I'm going to give it a swing. It's it's a lot of fun, man. You get yep. to catching them like that. It's a lot of fun. Now, a lot of guys use circle hooks bumping, and they just let the rod load up. When the one normally, if they're really aggressive, like they are so many times, when when they try to take that bait, they're going to try to take that rod away from you, and it's just real easy just to lay it on them. You can't do that with circle hook. That's and that double action hook hook will work. Team with those team catfish hooks, I guarantee it because I jerk. Yeah, yeah, and they'll work just fine. Yeah, it really will. Anybody got any more questions for Brian? I oh. thought I saw something here. No, just mainly comments. Okay. Okay. How many boats did you pick up for the fishing for freedom on last week's show? I, I do not know. There was several that was talking with them yeah. to get signed up. I hope a bunch, like I say, as of last weekend, and I haven't talked to Randall or Mindy either one this week. We was a hundred boats short or around that. Uh, hopefully, we're not quite that that. But please, if you guys are interested in fishing that tournament, it is so much fun. They're going to put if you're over an hour away, they're going to put you in a motel. They're going to feed you several meals, and you get to take out an American hero. You can't beat that. I don't care what you do. You're going to be out a little time and a little gas. That's it. Well worth the effort. Exactly. I know you're coming. We're so yeah. pleased that you're coming over there. Doc's coming. I will be there. It's just a great event. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, uh, we'll have a blast. I know where you're staying, man. 
For sure. <laughs> <laughs> and well, me. Well, yeah. he, uh, he's, well, it, it's flying by. It is. It really is. Brian, what reels are you using? Uh, pin Fathoms. And great reels. Great. Yep. I've had really good luck with them. Paul Bird says he thinks Mindy said that there was like 45 or 50 short now, so we made awesome. an impact on them. So, oh, guys, cool. guys, if you want to fish that Quincy tournament, you need to get signed up. We, we could use another 40 or 50 boats, and we'll make sure that all them guys that want to go out has a place to go. Yep. What side dragging weight do you use when you're drifting? At Lake of the Ozarks, ounce and a quarter, ounce and a half. Generally. Yep. Got it. Give me a number. Three. Is it me? It's you. I already gave the one away in chat. Okay. One. Two. Three. And the winner is Rusty Morris, Frog Legs, as Aaron <laughs> Wheatley calls him. Rusty Morris, we are going to spin the old rig wrap prize wheel for you tonight. It almost skipped a beat that time. <laughs> Whisker Wear Apparel. Rusty, if you will contact... Rob at Whisker Wear Apparel and tell them that you want a prize on Catfish Weekly. They will hook you up. Thank you so much, Rusty, for watching our show and playing the Rig Wrap Prize Wheel game. Rusty. And, th and thanks to our sponsors. Man, we got some good we got some good people that are, are supporting our show. And then some of them aren't sponsored. They're just jumping in there and donating things. And it's been great. Yep, it really has. Yes, it is. It's been a lot of fun. We're, and we're, we're just getting warmed up, Doc. We're, we're going to continue to do this for a long time to come, I hope. And as long as everybody's enjoying it, having a good time with it, we keep getting new members. We keep getting people to subscribe. And and uh, we get great guests like Brian to come on here. We're going to continue to do it for a long time to come. Well, Brian, we got another gentleman we want to get in here in just a minute. Thank you so much for taking Boomer's place. Uh, I know that he's squeaking along and he couldn't make it. And it was it was very very good of you to, on short short notice to jump in here and help us out tonight. That's fine. Um, like I said, we're going to fish that Twisted Cats tournament on the eighth, so you ought to get Boomer between then and the national championship. I'm sure he'll do it. Oh, I'm sure he will, and uh, and he'll get healed up one of these days. He's not going to be sick forever. No, no. And he, he was looking forward to it. He wanted to do it, but he just he didn't want to mess with his not being able to talk. So Well, he knows we'd make a lot of fun of him. We'd have had you in here anyhow. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, thanks so much, and we'll get Brock in here and be, talk about some kids' events and different things. I'm anxious to find out all the stuff that he does, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Good luck this weekend, man. Yeah, and if anybody uh, – wants to send me a friend request on Facebook or whatever and just doesn't want to talk on there, you know, putting it out there, just hit me up, shoot me a message, whatever. Or Boomer's the same way. So. Okay. Yeah, Boomer would be glad to talk to you. He's yeah. more gear type it out now than he would be to squeak through it, but it's not going to last forever. Yep. All right. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks, Brian. See you soon. Thanks, Brian. Bye. Thanks again, buddy. Yes, sir. Rock Decker. Hey, Lyle, what's going on, man? Not much, buddy. How you doing? Oh, it's been stressful today trying to get everything going, but we're here. <laughs> this, has been, this has been a really tough day for me. I've had some issues to deal with, and, of course, Mondays are, are terrible because I don't get anything done but show stuff. But I am really excited to get you on here so you can tell us about all the stuff that you do up in Iowa to help these kids stay involved with the sports of fishing, hunting, and all the other stuff you do. Yeah, um, we're actually from Amboy, Illinois. Um, we have a team of nine. Um, we do all kinds of events. This started out uh, last year, April 23rd of 2017. Um, I started making videos, hunting and fishing and what have you. 
and uh, I brought on some other teammates and team members. And, you know, amongst the team, we decided to make this, especially for the kids, uh, the underprivileged kids and um, just kids in general, bringing them back into the outdoors as so many of their, um, how would I say, extracurricular activities are being taken away from them, it seems like. Um, I mean, so far we've done small things, but we're growing in magnitude as we go. Um, done things such as like a, a haunted hay rack for one of the local teen centers, um, as well as a dodgeball tournament that they had. We all had the nine team members there uh, playing dodgeball with the kids and referee in it. Um, Mississippi Flyway Banquet, we were there. Uh, they do a lot for kids as well. Every kid that was there walked away with either a BB gun, a shotgun, or a 22 rifle. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. A dozen decoys or two do or, or what was it? A dozen decoys? Yeah, a dozen decoys. Um, so, I mean, we're active in a lot of these different areas, even with uh, St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, um, Hope Hospital, and uh, Ronald McDonald uh, Child Advocacy. Um, a lot of that comes through tournaments that we get in. As far as it's been ice fishing tournaments, obviously, uh, moving through the winter time. But we have a lot coming up this year as well. Um, we have a local sportsman's club that we are volunteer for their kids fishing derby, as well as their uh, youth day, which is like a uh, uh, bow shoot type thing for the kids. Um, another big thing we have coming up this year is there was an old camp that an apostolic church took over. And we are going to have what's called A-Team Adventures Camp out there. That'll be uh, August 11th of this year. We're going to have a bunch of inner city kids um and i mean pretty much any kids from the local area as well come out and we're gonna have different stations for them to learn how to cast poles shoot bows you know learn what trees are trees and just various activities for these kids um i mean other than that we do a lot of giveaways on our facebook page adventures of backwoods rock uh i mean a ton of kids fishing poles have been given away uh kids youth bows book bags come school season all kinds of stuff man that is that is really some cool stuff how long do you do yeah um april of 20 april 23rd will be the one year anniversary and it is really taken off we're averaging over 190 likes a month um i mean we're picking up with steam uh we got meet the buck episodes where people if they score the buck of that week and the closest winner gets a free decal from us um I mean, all, all kinds of stuff. And, and we're always looking for help, too. I mean, we have sponsors like Bo's Bait and Tackle right now and, and the ones behind me here on the wall, CD Skulls. He's a teammate of ours. Um, he does European mounts. Uh, Amboy Sporting Goods is actually our local Amboy, our, our local sporting goods store, and uh, he donates fishing poles to us as well to, you know, do giveaways for these kids and stuff. I mean, it's really all about trying to bring the industry into seeing that these kids have got to get outdoors. I mean, Oh, I was sorry. I mean, with with so many, um, how would I say it? Just outside influences in these kids' lives, they they need something that they can outlet in. And I mean, what better way than hunting or fishing or just being outdoors? That's right. If if it was no more than taking a hike, it'd be sitting inside all the time. You're absolutely right. Or going out and getting in trouble or something like that. I mean, there, there's got to be. We have to reconnect with the outdoors. I mean, and that's what we're all about. Well, uh, one of our biggest events that we have coming up is actually in Rock Falls, which is another local community. Um, we're running the Kids Fishing Derby. Uh, last year, it was called Bass Pro King Cat Quest. Um, in honor of Ken Freeman, who passed away, uh, he was a great guy. But uh, the Rock Falls City Tourism, uh, Janelle Luce, has petitioned Bass Pro to sponsor the event again. And, uh, I mean, we're, we're really hoping that they will sponsor the event again because the kids fishing derby is obviously one of the biggest things to us because we will be hosting the kids fishing derby, which they were going to try to dismiss altogether until we stepped up. Wow. So, I mean, that we would do have a question. Somebody wants to know what are your pages so they can go follow you. Um, the Facebook page is adventures of backwoods Brock. That is the Facebook page. It's right here. Okay. Adventures of backwoods Brock. Um, I believe Lyle Stokes follows it. He's also one of my friends on Facebook as well. Absolutely. Um, 
You know, that's the link about this. I knew we had to get you on here because um, we have a mutual friend that was telling me about this. And Dominic was saying, man, you really need to have this guy on here. You, you got to, to hear the stuff that he does. And I didn't grasp it at first. And then after I visited with you and, and you got to tell me some of this stuff, we got to get the word out because you're 100% correct that we need to keep these kids involved with outdoor activities because if we don't, at some time we're going to lose them all. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and honestly, my hat can't go off, I mean, any more than it does now for my team members. These guys have full-time jobs, families of their own. I mean, every single one of us has the same situation, and every, almost all of our free time is dedicated to this. I mean, uh, Stone Cold, for instance, we all have aliases. Stone Cold, for instance, he teaches wrestling, and that takes up six months of his time. I sure. mean, wrestling for these kids, you know. Um, I could tell you several occasions. We have two younger ones that are actually in high school, teammates that are in high school, because what better way for us to connect to these kids that we're looking to connect with than to have two of the, you know, two two people from the same generation on the team who understand what what these kids are looking for. That's right. And actually, we're trying to uh, help the one young buck we call him. He uh, started making his own soft plastics for bass fishing. He calls it Young Bucks Plastics. Um, Everything that we have done thus far has been self-funded. Uh, there's been just a few donations from, you know, some of our sponsors, as far as fishing poles, stuff like that. But everything has been 100% self-funded. Well, it's time to get your name out there and get involved and get some of these corporate sponsors behind you to make it easier so you can do more for these people. I know Dominic Custer was really, really wound up when he was talking to me about all the good stuff you do, it's very evident you're making an impact, not only for your community, but on these kids' lives. And, and it'll travel on for years and years to come. Very much so. I believe you 100%. It's really touching to us when we arrive at these kids' houses or we meet them wherever in the community to pick up their prize, you know, because they want a giveaway because somebody liked and commented and shared a post and tag some friends and this kid shows up and it's just ear to ear smile. They're not, you know, they're just, it's unbelievable. It is. It gives I, you the chills. I know that it is because I have seen some of those things and, uh, you know, kids are so impressionable. Uh, Very much. This is, you're doing the kind of things that will set a lifetime impression on them. And they may not remember it next week or the week after because they got their girlfriend or whatever. But 20 years from now, they're going to look back and say, hey, look what Brock done for me. Absolutely. And, and, and it's not just me, the A team. I mean, I, like I say, I can't give these guys enough credit. I, awesome. I love every one of them. We're a big family here, you know, and I, just kind of started this, so they all put me as the owner and operator. And it's kind of, I mean, it's just a mutual thing, you know. How many did you say was involved with this? Well, there's me, my wife, Jaybird, Stoney, uh, Skull Doctor, Young Buck, Squirrel Now, Bo, and Spider Legs. So there's nine of us. Okay. Um, and every one of us has our own individual set of skills, I guess you'd say. Like Jaybird, he does custom duck and goose calls. Uh, he, we've been pushing him for the longest time to start this, and he actually donated some to Mississippi Flyway uh, Banquet. And they are going for seventy to eighty dollars a piece. I mean, these are these are you know custom duck call barrels by him for these people, and he can make them in various colors and so on and so forth. I mean, but. It's just all things. I tried to tell these guys that if we can't get sponsors, then we have to create our own industry by doing things ourselves. Yeah, correct. That is correct. Well, that, that's an outstanding thing you guys are doing up there. Um, anytime that we can help you through Catfish Weekly, if you need any of our assistance, all you got to do is let us know. And feel free to use the group page to post any of your information on there. Uh, so we can get you some assistance. I know that there's a lot of people that would like to help out. Some of them are able to, and some of them can't, but anybody that is able to help Brock and, and the A team out, uh, how can they get a hold of you and, and how can they make this happen? Um, we have cards actually, but 
uh, probably the easiest way would be through the Facebook page, um, Adventures of Backwoods Brock. Uh, that'd probably be the easiest way right now. We do have a Gmail account, Adventures of Backwoods Brock at gmail.com is our email. And then uh, my phone number is also on the uh, Facebook page. Um, we're working on our non for profit paperwork right now. We're hoping to go 501c3. Um, that way it makes it easier for places to donate things to us because, I mean, it'll be for an, a, chari a, a charitable organization. Sure. Um, I mean, that'll, you know, it's an added bonus for them for tax purposes and, you know, it, and it helps us help these kids more and more. Mm -hmm. Now, you've been doing some live stuff on Facebook. Can you tell us about that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, all of our videos are raw, unedited live. I mean, you see it as we are doing it most of the time. Um, all of our giveaways are live videos. Um, our meet the buck episodes are live videos, uh, fishing, whether we're at a tournament or just out goofing around, everything is live. Um, I told these guys, you know, we can do some edited videos along the way for, uh, I guess some pizzazz, but other than that, everything you see is live. Um, I watched the live one the other day where you guys were scoring a buck. It was very interesting, you guys. It was full of energy and entertainment. I thought it was done very well. Well, I appreciate that. Yep, that'd be – you probably watched Meet the Buck number 18. That was episode 18 with Spider Legs. Yep. Um, we've had 18 episodes, and uh, I think six of those episodes were actually bucks that were harvested this year. And um, we do a lot of how-to videos, too, you know, for kids that are getting in the outdoors or even beginners, it doesn't just necessarily have to be kids. Our how-to videos are for anybody, amateur, novice, or um, experienced, to learn the ways we do things, like gutting deer, or uh, following a blood trail, or what baits to use, or recipes that we use that maybe they want to try. Just a vast amount of knowledge, I guess. Um, and we're not saying that everything we do is right, but it's what we know. Well, sure. You know, and... and just getting get to do what you're doing is, is so great for these kids, and and uh, I'm glad that you're getting the nonprofit stuff going up. That's that's pretty cool. Uh, it helps helps keep anybody from getting in the tax bind. And there's no sense of tax and stuff. When you're trying to help these young kids. Absolutely. Yep, we've been pretty in tune with your page as well, Catfish Weekly. We we enjoy the information. Uh, a lot of us are cat fishermen here. Um, that's actually what got me really really hooked into flathead fishing was you catch that first big one and that that just that just that's it if <laughs> <laughs> you're done you're hooked <laughs> yeah every other fish is just kind of like yeah that's fun but uh actually one of our teammates last year uh fly man um he had never caught a flathead before and i had taught him some of my techniques and my tricks and kind of set him up on it and he ended up catching a 32 pound flathead and he said he don't care for any other fish ever again because the fight thing gave him you know so <laughs> those flatheads are just kids, cats. kids you know we want these kids to catch that 20 30 40 pound fish and just that's right that'll like that's it you know <laughs> that's exactly right i tell you what brock we need to spin the wheel would you pick me out a number between one and five let's see if we can give something away uh let's go four four it is One, two, three, four, and the winner is Adam Shriver, S-H-R-I-V-E-R. -E Congratulations. And let's just see what he wins. I've been spinning it the other way. We'll turn around and go this direction this time. Get a little more roll out of it, Doc. <laughs> yeah. It's going down. It's going downhill now. Yeah, man. Hooker's terminal tackle, mad catter hooks. There Adam, we go. If you will contact James R. Wood at Hooker's Terminal Tackle and tell him that you want a package of mad catter hooks on the prize wheel at Catfish Weekly. He will fix you up. Thank you so much for playing the prize wheel game. And thanks for watching Catfish Weekly. We appreciate it. All right, Brock. What else is there you need? Can tell us about what you're doing up there. Um, I mean, I don't I we ain't really got much. Just 
lining up these kids, trying to get some giveaways and stuff going. Uh, right now we have a thing going on, I guess. Um, we've kind of, we've started our own, started making our own decals and apparel for our team. Um, everything's done in house now. It, it makes it more affordable for us. Sure. And, um, that's probably one of the biggest things that we're doing. Um, and with these decals that people, uh, donate to our page for, we are going to be running a giveaway pretty soon. Last year we did a brand new diamond bow package. Um, from Amboy Sporting Goods. Wow. We ran that giveaway, um, and that was open entry. Uh, the next giveaway that we're going to do is going to be, I mean, for our supporters. I mean, that that I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but our, our uh, supporters actually are going to be able to get into this giveaway. I'll show you what we're doing here. Um, it's a brand new crossbow. It's called the Carnage Apocalypse. Very nice. Wow. And that's going to be the next giveaway um, with purchase a decal or <laughs> donation of one of our donation for one of our decals. I'm sorry. These are all the ones that we're making up right now. We have various colors and stuff coming, but uh, we'd like to keep it just pink and orange for right now. Awesome, man. That's a great deal. So if they buy if they buy a couple of decals, they can get chances at going in to win that crossbow. Absolutely. Yep. If they donate for a decal, they will get a chance to, they'll get a free, or I mean, they'll get the, the decal with the donation and then they'll get a chance into this uh, crossbow giveaway. And we're really, fingers crossed, we're hoping that it goes to a kid that can harvest their first deer with this. Absolutely, man. What a great prize. That's an outstanding thing. And, and you know, I got to, I got to sit back here and look at the people that are donating these prizes for you, man. That's some cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, this was actually purchased. We oh, purchased. Okay. I, okay. I, I purchased this one. Yep. That's awesome. But uh, Bose Bait and Tackle and Amboy Sporting Goods, them, I mean, they've been really good about donating kids fishing poles and gift certificates and stuff like that. You know, um, as well as some of our supporters, even they'll show up with fishing poles for us, and uh, you know, give us even uh, gift certificates for some of these various places that sponsor us right now. And I mean, we are always looking for new sponsors. I mean, absolutely. obviously. Absolutely. That's, that's outstanding, Brock. I, I have to commend you on what you're doing up there. It's really a cool deal. And, I, and we need more people and organizations like you're doing up there throughout the United States to help these kids out and get them out in the outdoors. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Well, listen, why don't you tell us one more time how they can get a hold of you? And if they decide they would like to donate to get some decals or or donate something to your organization, how they can go about doing that? Well, they would get a hold of us on Adventures of Backwoods Brock on Facebook. And uh, they can click the like button and then just message the page from there. And uh I'll be sending your decals out this week, Lyle. I know you said you want to put a couple on your boat. Doc, if you want some too, I can get you some, man. Oh, yeah. I'm all about decals. If all right. I'll get you guys two a piece then. Absolutely. What yep. colors you want? Uh, what do you got? Green? Oh, <laughs> green's for the team. I'd like to give you green, oh, but green's okay. for the team members. That all way right, people I'm know where we're at. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you asked what color. I'm just saying, yeah, yeah, I wanted to match my good rod. Response, good response. What colors do you have that you're wanting to, to use, Brock? You know what? If you guys both want green, we'll give you green. No, I, you know, white would be fine with me. Yeah. That's okay. Fine. That, we that, have, that's uh, right now, we got white, red, yellow, a dark green, um, orange, and pink. I'm thinking white would work perfect for me. Okay. Yeah. The yellow work. Make mine yellow. It'll make it stand out on my boat. And then when I'm going through the fishing for freedom, people will be able to see it. That's right. All right. Uh, Lyle, I'll get a hold of you and get your guys' addresses. Sure. And then uh, we, can you know, it, I, we can make it. Make it green. I do yeah. have Doc's address, so that won't be a problem. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> Listen, bro, <laughs> thank you so much for everything that you're doing up there. Um, sometime later on in the year, I don't know if you guys do a Christmas special thing or an event or something. If you have something big that's coming up, contact me. 
uh, do anything to help these kids out. And, and we appreciate what you and your whole team's doing for those those kids. Pretty awesome. I, Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, big shout out to my team members, you guys. You guys are awesome. Lyle, Doc, I really appreciate the recognition, you guys. All of us do. It's huge. Uh, we've Thanks. been so nervous for this interview. Oh, yeah. You guys uh, have uh, you done yeah. great. You know what? We, yeah. we want to help the kids all we can, and, and guys like you are making that easy for us. Thank you so much. Good deal. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, Brock. Thanks a bunch. Thanks Man. for being yep. on the show. That was pretty awesome. Doc, that's, hey, thank you. that's a great thing that they're doing up there for those kids. We need to see more stuff like that. Uh, not just in Iowa or Missouri or Ohio. That stuff needs to be gone. These guys are setting a precedence for people all over the United States. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm very proud of what they're doing up there and glad to get to know them. Uh, what do you have for uh, results or upcoming events, Doc? Uh, let's see, results. Hmm. Hang on a minute. i got to find the right paper. Here we go. That, All me... right. Um, got it. Central oh. Ohio, Allen Creek. Uh, this was last Saturday. 16 boats. Uh, first place, Sean Dauphin, Craig Williams, 42.60. Second place, Skip and Rainy Martin, 40 pounds. Big Fish, they had the Big Fish 11.45 channel. Wow. And third was Amanda Johnson and Joe Hatfield with 30.65 pounds. Their next tournament is April 14th on Dillon Lake at 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. This Saturday, SWOCC Tournament. This is the first tournament of the year. This is the tournament series that's run by Vince Nadosky. It's going to be on Rocky Fork Lake, and it'll be this Saturday, March 31st, uh, 8 a.m. till 4 o'clock. The weather's supposed to be pretty awesome, a high of 52. Winds out of the northwest, 8 to 15 miles per hour. Uh, those of you that are may come to fish this, Cabela's will be there in May. So this is a good opportunity to pre-fish this lake before <coughs> that tournament comes about. And Vince puts on a great, great tournament series. Awesome. Your turn, Lyle. All right. I'd like to announce tonight that Mississippi Catfish Trail Tournament for April 7th has been moved to DeSoto Lake at the Hill House Moon Lake. So uh, the Moon Lake is closed due to high water, uh, so they don't know if it'll be down enough in time, so they're just going to move it over to DeSoto Lake. So you guys want to fish Mississippi Catfish Trail on April 7th. If you have any questions, please contact them. But that's the message I got to pass along this morning. Uh, final results from Keystone and the Getting Hook Rod and Reel Catfishing Tournament. For uh, March 24th was first place on a catch and release, 67.36 pounds. Uh, that's the catch and release is the team name. They had an 18.60 big fish. Second place was Catastrophe team, 64.24 pounds. Big fish, 22.18. Third place was River Rats, 59.46 with a big fish. It was a flathead of 37.82 pounds. Pretty nice fish. Fourth was Catfish Addictions with 39.6 and big fish of 8.48. And fifth place, Sleeping Dogs, 28.14, the big fish of 7.56. I would like to tell you, Doc, and I don't know if I re don't remember if I told you at the beginning of the show or not, but between 80 and 90% of the fish that I personally caught over the weekend was on demon dragons very impressed mm. with those and the action that we got we didn't catch every fish on them because john wasn't using them but the percentage of fish that i caught on those was unbelievable were you using three of two of i was using the big boys oh the three of okay the big boys and there's so much traffic down there with people moving in and out from spots crappie fishing and cat fishing and snagging and stuff like that now there it's not always at high rates of speed you know they're right going here or there but every time your boat moves it makes that thing work um 
my theory was all along that the foam floats, I go through several of them a day when we're out fishing because they just braid eats them up. And I like my braid. I'm not giving it up for anything. It doesn't affect these demon dragons. It floats the bait better. They last forever. I've yet to tear one up or lose one. They work great. And they rattle. What more could you ask for? Mine are getting beat up pretty bad because fish are eating them. Well, you know, I'm gonna. I got some stuff I'm gonna be testing on that, and we'll get get back with uh, with guys to see how that works out a little bit. So, uh, Big T Fishing, personal best on a demon dragon, sixty five pounds. That's outstanding. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Hey, hey I do have something else. Yes, something yes. I've been trying to cover in the last couple of weeks. Um, before I forget it, because sure. I've been trying to do this for a couple of weeks, but the, the shows have been just downright crazy over the last month or so. Yeah. Um, and we thank everybody for jumping in there. But I had just done some uh, some maintenance. I always start my maintenance. One of the first things I pick on when I do my maintenance is the bilge pump. Uh, one of the things I want to tell everybody is I didn't know it uh, till I looked it up online, but these bilge pumps have about a two to three year warranty on them. Really? Um, yeah, I wasn't aware of that. This this Sahara uh, Sahara, yeah, this Atwood Sahara. I don't know if you can see that, but there it is. Atwood Sahara. This was what was in my boat. I put a Sea Flow one in the boat, and uh, to replace one that had gone bad, and uh, it's got a four year warranty on it. Well, when I last year when I was at the Mississippi River Monsters, I bought this one at uh, Bass Pro. When I went to test it out before I put it in, the automatic section did not work. So when the float here would go up, it didn't do anything. In fact, when I plugged it in, it immediately came on, which is bad news yeah. for a bilge pump because they won't last very long if they're running dry all the time. So I just, you know, on a whim, I just said, oh, hmm, three-year guarantee on that thing. So I got on the website. I went to Atwood, contacted Atwood, talked to a gentleman by the name of Dave Stewart, and he is their warranty person or whatever. You know, and he told me, he said, well, what's wrong with it? And I said, and I told him, I said, the automatic valve doesn't, the automatic uh doesn't work on it and he goes okay he said uh have you got the receipt i said no i bought it at bass pro last year and i said i had i was getting ready to put it in the boat but because it didn't function correctly i didn't want to put it in the boat so he told me he goes okay i'll tell you what i'll do he said you take and you cut those wires off as close to that bilge pump as you can get it and he said we're going to call this a field destroy so I clipped them off. He said, send me a picture using your phone. Send it to my email. I sent him the email. Two days later, this thing arrived in the mail. He had sent me a, a, a brand new pump to replace the one. So you guys, if you're looking at your bilge pumps and you go to change them out, check the warranty on these things. You know, you may get an, another replacement for one that had failed. So that's something to keep in mind. You know, Doc, that's some pretty good customer service right there. Yes, they it is. Appreciate their them people's business, and 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 I know that companies like that uh, will stay in business a long time doing business that way. Yeah. So that's outstanding. Uh, how about a tip of the week, Doc? Tip for the week. Well, once again. <laughs> I was doing some maintenance, and when, and when I did, uh, when I put the new uh, bilge pump into my live well, I use um, shrink wrap tubing to cover all my joints. The other thing I use is a product called Brush On. This is called liquid electrical tape. It's a black rubbery stuff that you just brush it on. So what you do is once you make your connections, you brush this stuff on, leave it set for five minutes, 
It dries up solid. Water will not get to your joints. I've used it on the backs of uh, the switches that are under the boat. They have a tendency of corroding up. I'll clean them all off. I'll put the connections back on them and then cover this stuff up. It's a little messy to, to begin with, but it's got a brush right in the can. You put it on there. Man, I tell you what, it will seal them joints up. There's no oxidation. Nothing goes on. And, you, and we all know that the water and rain and stuff can really get to electrical joints. So that's Dr. Tip and I use black electrical, liquid electrical tape. That's man, Dr. That, Tip. That's awesome, man. I, I can't wait to try get me some of that and try it on my fuse panel underneath the, the boat. I've, that's where my ground issue was on my depth finders. Yeah. And I'll take some sandpaper in there and sand all those places off and then reconnect everything and then put some of that over. I should be done with that. Yep. That, that's and you, great. And you, and you put that stuff on there and I mean, it, you know, you don't ever have to do deal with it again. That's awesome. Now, we made a post today, Doc, to give everybody a little teaser. Yes, we now, did. We're going to tease them a little bit more. We have a big prize coming up. We're going to announce it next week. It's going to be something that all tournament fishermen will probably be interested in. Most people that have a boat will be interested in, and it is really, really cool. I'm still working on it. Uh, I'm still talking to the gentleman. And as soon as I finalize all that, we will announce it. And you're going to be finalizing that this weekend. If I, I do, yep. right. So if it gets done, we'll be able to announce it next week and we'll start the games. And yep. it's going to be a really good deal. If somebody's going to be very, very, very proud of this, but you know, everything that we've been giving away here recently, they all been proud of it. And, and, and I want to tell everybody, um, the viewers that join our Facebook page that like and subscribe and share our videos are the reason we're able to do this because other uh, sponsors have told these guys their, the reactions they are getting from people that watch our show. And that's the reason this is happening. Yep. So, uh, Scott, we are, but we got to get enough on there to make it worthwhile to have a permanent sign up. It, it is, we're not getting people to join fast enough and enough of them to where I can separate them out and do it that way. We have to, we got to have at least a hundred. We just do. Uh, and once we do that, then all those people won't have to sign up every week and it'll be a lot different. Doc, there's something that I wanted to talk about tonight, and I'm probably going to step on some toes. Um, I was approached about this over the weekend, and I talked to a guy about it. A gentleman asked me, he said, why is it that people still are so down on catfishing as a sport and catfishermen? And uh, then I got a sample of it today, and in my opinion, it's because of negativity. Uh, people, if you don't have anything good to say about Joe's tournament down the road, don't say anything. There's no sense of stirring the pot. These tournament directors work really hard to make things happen. They do a lot of stuff that you never know about. A lot of things come out of their pocket that you don't realize. And unless you stand in their shoes, you have no clue what they go through. There's no sense of complaining all the time. If you don't like it, don't fish it. If you do like it, tell everybody. That's the only way the sport will grow. But when you're mouthing and running off about this guy done that or this guy done that, that's negativity. I will not tolerate that, and I don't expect that anybody else would. It's silly to do that. We need to get along. If we want to work to get regulations put into effect, the people in Ohio, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, have all got to work together at some point. We need an organization formed like BASS to get these regulations so these people understand we are serious about making it happen. Where That organization could go into each state and, and work with them guys to get stuff done. But negativity does not help us in any form of the way. If you're going to be negative, I will not tolerate it on any of my pages or posts. Your post will be removed. The second time I see it, you will be removed. 
and I hope that people follow suit with this. Negativity is killing our sport. We are we got in case you missed it, George Young Jr. has got some stuff going on for catfishing. Aaron oh. Wheatley has some stuff Wait. going on for catfishing. There's a lot of people that work really hard to make this sport do. And when you guys run off about how things are being done and why this guy didn't do that and didn't do that, you're just killing it. You know, you I had a post last night about you need to post up the percentages to your term. You can't do that. If you have 10 boats, you use one set of, of, of one table to for payout. If you have 30 boats, there's another table. If you have 100 boats, there's another table. There's no way you can do that. Nobody's going to sit down and figure all that stuff up. And if you ask Jody Harrison or Daniel Parsons or Aaron Wheatley or some of these other directors, they're going to tell you it's none of their business because it's not. You're going to get a big paycheck. If you fish the Catfish Weekly National Championship, if no other teams get in right now, the winner's going to win over $5,000. I fished a $300 entry tournament over the weekend. First place got $2,800. Now, which would you rather do? Stop the negativity. Work together. Make these things happen. We need this sport to continue to grow, and guys like George and them are stepping up. They're setting a precedence for people down the road, and I'm proud to be part of it. Amen. All right. And that's all I got to say. <laughs> about that. All right, then. I will tell you that Monday, April 2nd, Paul Blackwell is going to be on Catfish Weekend. And Paul Blackwell guy that. Uh isn't it out in North Carolina? I'm not sure. I believe it is on the James River, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And he is going to tell us about his brand new Coast Guard approved licensed guide service that, in my opinion, every guide, if they are on water, should be made to have that license for nothing more than the safety factor of what they learned from the Coast Guard. Just my idea. But Paul's going to be here. We're going to be spinning the rig wrap prize wheel, and we're going to be telling you hopefully about a big giveaway that everybody's going to want to be a part of. Santi Cooper he is out of San, South, South Carolina on Santi Cooper. He has been laying out some big fish out there, Doc. Big blues. Mm -hmm. Big blues. Bottom dollar outdoors says, I'm starting to look forward to Lyle's rants as much as Doc's tips. Well, you know what? I, I don't mean to step on people, and I want everybody to watch our show, and I want everybody to enjoy the sport of catfishing, but negativity is a terrible thing, and we need to stop it. Yes. What do you do? All right, folks. Paul Blackwell next Monday night. Thanks for watching Catfish Weekly. See you then. Yeah, and as we leave in the show here, everyone, <laughs> purely, purely still keeping the big guy going. Thanks, everybody.